Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppets. Today, drinking some more beer that I brought back from the trip to Franconia. I still have a one left. <laughs> I got, again, I got two cases. It takes a while to get through two cases, especially when most of it is different beers that you also want to feature on the channel to spread the gospel. It's a fantastic classic beer, especially German beer and lagers. But it's not lagers today that we're trying, it's ales. And we're trying to battle. Uh, two Weissbeers today. So we're battling the Bauerei Wagner Weisse and the Kuchelbauer Weisse. So it's not a blind tasting uh, today. I'm on my own. I wanted some beers. I thought it'd be fun to just try and compare these two because this is an authentic Bavarian Weizen from Bauerei um, Kuchelbauer. Uh, in Abensberg, which is very close to Kelheim, which is where Schneider is based. I've reviewed one of the beers before. And then Wagner is in, in Merkendorf, uh, just outside of, uh, in Memmersdorf, just outside of Bamberg. So a Franconian take on a Weizen versus an actual Bavarian one. Uh, this is in a region called something, something Bayern. Uber? No, Uber. Unterbayern. Unterbayern? No, I can't remember. I'll put it in the video because I just did some research because I was wondering, is this actually part of any of the parts of Franconia? Because there's like uh, uh, the lower part and then there is the upper part and then Unterfunken, Oberfunken and then the other part here. I can't remember what that's called. Um, but this will be fun because I've actually also kind of started to enjoy Weissbiss more. And I've reviewed these guys to Weisse. And uh, I was a bitch to that beer back in 2000 and what was it, 11 or 13 or something. At least it was 11 years ago that I reviewed it. I just graded it way too low. I remember I was like, oh, but it's not as good as Weinstefan and Schneider. I always was like, like, those are the best. And those are also some really fantastic rice beer producers, but there's definitely some others that also make really good stuff, like Andex, which just really came out of the of a left field for me. But I think it also depends on the style. Some are really banana heavy and more to the sweet side, and some are more spicy and dry. So kind of, I, I think it depends on what you want. I think the very best uh, balance is both, maybe a little bit to the fruity side and sweet side. So. Um, yeah, apparently they have a massive tower, art tower or something like that in at this brewery. And they also have a Gasthof, I found out. So you could actually also stay at the brewery in the city. So I think it's like the city brewery and then a production brewery outside of the city. Uh, as far as it looked on pictures, at least. They have a selection of different wheat beers. They only brew wheat beers. And uh, this is like their house beer besides the Turmweiser, which is a little bit stronger. And then they also make a couple other different varieties. But it's 5.2% and uh, yeah, of course, put with wheat malt because it's a Weizen and top fermented because it's an ale. And uh, Wagner's Weizen, which is called Wagner Weisse, is 5.3%. So they're just almost the same ABD, which is uh, pretty appropriate for this uh, tasting as well. And I'm wondering if they're the same age. The expiration date is only a few days, uh, 10 days plus between each other. So I'm thinking it's going to be quite fair to compare them. But let's see. I think we're going to start with the authentic Bavarian Weizen first from Kuchelbauer and see how this is. So yeah, Weizen, again, it, it can be a fantastic style. I don't drink it as often, but starting to drink them now and revisiting some, it's a style that's actually really nice. I will still prefer pills most of the time, but there are definitely some Weizen where I've been like, wow, this is world class. I really want to drink that again. So let's check this one out. So Pour is a very nice hazy golden yellow color. When you see the Pour in the video, it's quite clear, but that's because these bottles have been standing for a bit and especially also standing in my cellar. So sediment is just like dropped to the bottom. That's usually what happens with Weizen's, and that's why they ask you to swirl the bottle and dunk it in so you get this more hazy look from the yeast. And some are more hazy than others. Not all Weizen's are created equal. <laughs> but let's check out the aroma on the Kuchelbauer. Really nice banana, a really nice brioche bread. Almost like a banana sandwich. <laughs> touch of clove to it, touch of allspice. Maybe even like a soft whiff of apricot, but that banana is most for a problem. It's massively bready. It smells good. Let's try it. Cheers. Oh, 
I brewed some hazy beer myself today. <laughs> but not a Weizen. Hey, hazy IPA. I'd love to try and do a really nice hazy Weizen at some point. So just because it can be a nice style. So this strikes that balance, I think, that's very much needed in the style. So it's not really sweet. Like it has the banana sweetness, but it also has dryness and citrus and zestiness, which is nice, like lemon. Maybe even whiffs of dried apricot. But it's one of these more dry bisons. I think it leans towards that, but it still strikes a good balance because there's enough sweetness and like fruit flavor to have you think, yeah, that's classic vice beer. And something like this is miles ahead of the supermarket swill that a lot of people think is great Weizen. It's definitely to the drier side. The sweetness is kept in check by dryness and high CO2. But it's really like that, a, a brioche, slice of brioche uh, bread with loads of banana. Fresh, vibrant, juicy, almost banana flavor to this one. And then that understated clove and allspice kind of nuance, hints of dried apricot. Um, like really nice chewy breadiness, almost like a little bit of a, a rustic Munich edge to it. Munich malt, that is. Mm. Very nice if I do. So let's try and move on over to Wagner's. I did not, most of the beers I've left from Wagner were, are beers I've not tried from them. But yeah, let's try the Wagner Weizen. So again, Franconian. And it looks a little bit more dense in terms of haze. It's also a little bit darker. This is more of a golden orange, and this is more of a rust orange hue, with also a white head and high CO2 levels. So check out the aroma on this one. Ooh, uh, yeah, definitely more of an overripe banana note to this one. But there's definitely also sulfur in this compared to that one. This has that sulfuric note, and you get that in some Weizen's, and you also get that in some lagers. It's like this, especially when the yeast is in suspension. So getting that like flavor in, like it's, yeast does so much to give like slight sulfuric notes. And with the yeast in suspension, you'll get more of it. So it's really impressive when you try the beers that do not have it at all, but the yeast is in suspension. But yeah, there's definitely a sulfuric note. And now I can't <laughs> get that out of my head. Like it smells, it smells, besides that, it smells nice. It's more sweet banana heavy. Uh, but, oh yeah, loads of, also bubble gum now that I swirled it. Like that's the nice thing with this glass. The thing that with this glass that's not too nice is that it's not curved, so it's harder to smell from it. This is harder to smell from because I filled it up so much. Definitely bubble gummy banana notes. Tutti fruity yeast character. Much more to that fruity, sweet, yeasty side actually. Not sweet, but fruity. And it's also a bit, like there's definitely the spice note. I'm not sure if it's clove, but there's something lightly spicy about it, but the spices are soft, maybe pepper, but it's definitely more of a fruity, tutti fruity kind of ice beer. They're vastly different on the aroma. And as I've swirled it, the uh, sulfur seems to fade. Sulfur is super volatile. So you can get it out of the glass, a glass really easily by swirling actually, most of the time. Let's try it, cheers. More dry than the aroma indicated. Definitely a bit more banana flavor to this one. Also some apricot. Um, but it's also that kind of like banana bready thing. It also has more tartness. It's a slightly more like citrusy acidic. It's definitely more fruity. I think this is more balanced between the flavor spectrum you expect for the style. Whereas this is like more to the fruity side and it's lacking some of the complexities that the other one has. This is definitely the inferior of the two. Um, still a nice Weizen, but it's just not that layered. It's, um, yeah, I don't know. I much prefer the <laughs> the lagers from, from Wagner, but it's still a good Weizen. I mean, I'd be happy to drink those again, but they're good. I don't think these are the best Weizens you can get, but they're nice Weizens um, for sure. I don't know. I'm, the, it's interesting. When I poured these, I could instantly smell the bag. I was like, ah, that's, that's definitely going to be my jam. But sitting, sipping on them, I'm definitely enjoying the Coca Bowl more. They're really nice Weizens. I'm not blown away by either of them. Also, Weizen is like such a volatile style. You want to drink it as fresh as you can. Um, 
But they're good. They're good. They're nice beers. I'm just not like uh, fired up about them. As I've been with Undex, for example. Uh, and also just Wagner Slagers, which are just fire. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if... I'm debating breaking 90 on this one or just saying straight 90 on the Kuchelbauer because I actually think it's a pretty well-balanced, tasty vice beer, which is like, it nails that balance so it's not too sweet or just too like much on spice. It has both of the fruit and the spice. Whereas I think the Wagner is maybe a little bit too fruity acidic. It hides the malt a bit. Like the malt character is not standing out as much to me because of that. Um, there's even like a little bit of almost like a grassy hoppiness to it, but it's still good. I'd still definitely drink it again. So it's something like an 89, 90 for Kokerbauer, maybe 89. Yeah, I think 89. Like I'm not as excited about it as some other, but I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Maybe I'll change it in the description. Have a look. <laughs> Let's say 89.90. And for the Wagner, 87, something like that. Yeah, 87, I think. It's still a nice Weizen, but it's not like the best I've had. So, yeah. But it's also not what Wagner is known for, but they have one. So if you go there and you want Weizen, you can get drink Weizen. So, hmm. If you guys had a chance to try Wagner's Weisse from Brauerei Wagner and Merkendorf or the Kuchelbauer Weisse, or the Hefeweiss beer from Kuchelbauer, let me know if I thought of them. The winner today is Kuchelbauer, making the best Weiss beer of these two producers, comparing these two specific beers at these specific ages. <laughs> uh, because I'm sure, I think they're around the same time, but it's you're probably going to have a different experience if, if you drink these fresh at the brewery, or just fresher. Because um, I, don't, I don't know how the dating is on these, if they give them a year in the bottle, if they give them a couple months. Most of the beer in Franconia is short shelf vibes. So, but if you guys had either of these, let me know what you thought. Thanks a ton for watching this video. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up and join it. And ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I want to say cheers to my favorite, the Kuchelbauer. And see you guys in another video.